Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and thanks so much to Sean for having me on the channel again. Today, I want to share with you a live blog post filter, kind of like what you would get with a dynamic site, except we're going to build it entirely with HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. Let me show you how it works here. I've got uh, a list of just six or so here, and these are just fake posts that I've created. Uh, but when you search here, you can search for like JavaScript, something like this, and it'll search through 600 different posts. And as you can see there in real time, it's actually generating real search results. If you want more than just these six that show, you can come in here and click view more posts. It'll actually show you six more if there are six more in your search query. So this is all done with just vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and I'm going to show it to you now. Now, in this very first video, I am just going to focus on the HTML. Then we'll kind of progressively with each video show more and more. So if you're just comfortable with HTML and CSS, maybe just the two, first two videos would be helpful for you. If you want to get into deeper stuff, we'll get into JavaScript eventually. And uh, so stick around for that. Now, let me say a little bit about this fake data that I've got here. I just generated with this, this with two NPM packages. One's called Faker, and uh, it allows you to basically generate a bunch of random stuff. So everything from addresses for people to animals, commerce, all this stuff. So I used some of this to generate like those little images, the avatars of the people's heads and the dates and that kind of stuff. I also used another one called Cooter Ipsum. And I thought this one was fun because it pulls in a bunch of kind of tech jargon and that actually populates most of the titles and things like that and figured it might be fun to work with. I've got a video on my channel showing how to do that. So if you're interested in generating a bunch of fake data to, to use in your projects as you try to learn JavaScript or something like that, I think these will be fun for you. All right, let me jump over now and uh, let's go ahead and look at one more thing before we jump into the code. This GitHub link will give you access to each of the videos here. I've got four in this little series. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is come to this lesson one starting point and go ahead and grab the code and download it here and then open it up in whatever uh, code editor you have. The finished code is actually in the main branch here. So if you want to ever look at what the finished code is supposed to look like, you can do that. Uh, or you can, of course, look at the live project here and play with it yourself. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so all I've got right now is that post.json file. We're going to use that once we get around to actually pulling in data. But what we'll do first of all is just come in here and create a new file, and we will call it uh, index.html. And once we have that, come over here and do an exclamation point and then a tab. And Emmet will expand this out and give you kind of boilerplate HTML. We're going to come in here and just call this, uh, let's see, blog post filter, something like that. And with that, I'll save it. If you open up an extension here called Live Server, which you might need to download first, and then come back over here to your code and just right click and click Open with Live Server, it should open it up right here. And just to make sure it's working, it'll actually hot reload here. I come in here and say hi and expand that out and it should just show up like it does. Okay, perfect. So let's close that sidebar here. Let me zoom in just a touch and uh, let's go ahead and start building out this site. Inside the body tag, we're gonna add a main tag and then everything is gonna live inside of a div called container. And again, I'll just type that with a dot and expand it to add a class to a div here. Now up top, we've got a section in H1, and if I add these curly brackets here, I can say recent blog posts, and then hit tab, and it'll expand that out. And then if I hit the return key, I can now enter in additional things. So let's go ahead and add up top there, we have that little search bar. So we're gonna have a label like this, and it will be for search. And then I'm gonna come inside here, and we're gonna add an input field. And we're gonna say type search. And when we do this, we're going to get some extra benefit. The biggest thing would be as people type here, if you hit the escape key, it'll actually clear it out, which comes default with this input type of search. Next, I'm going to add an ID of search to correspond to that for attribute in the label. Now let's go ahead and turn off some natural things like autocomplete. I don't want that. We'll turn that off and we'll turn off spell check too, just in case they've got some buddy's name or something like that they're searching for that wouldn't be that might be caught by a spell checker. And then finally, we're going to have a placeholder. And this placeholder, uh, we'll just say enter a search term like that. Now, all of the posts are going to live in something called a post container. That's just a div with a class of post container. In a second, we'll come back to this. Let's add one final thing before we do. The final thing we're going to add is a button. And it's a button because it doesn't move to a different page. It just interacts with a page. And that's typically what you're going to use buttons for. We're going to give it a class of btn. And then we'll give it another class of btn dash dash view like that. And then we'll just say view more posts. All right, if I save it there, you see it populates up that way. Now, the last thing we need to add in our HTML right now is some sample data for our CSS. In the next video, we're going to style 
this each of these posts, but without any posts there, it's going to be hard to do a whole lot. So let's just do this. Let's jump back over to the finished code and let's just make it easy on ourselves. Let me inspect this here and I'll just grab one of these random posts like this and let me just copy this and then I'll come back over this way and let me paste it in here. You can do the same thing and I'll actually paste it three times and that way we have something to style uh, when we come to the CSS next video. All right, I will catch you in video two. Thanks so much for watching and happy coding.